Hello, Warriors. How's everyone doing? Ziggy, hi, Patrick. How are you? Everyone have a great weekend. All right, I, I want to start off uh, just a little update. Last week, later in the week, so this looked like a rally to sell for another break to new lows. Um, I showed Greg's work. I was Freebie Dale, showed another break coming. Take out this wave three low, and then this completes four. So that looks like it's manifesting here. Of course, we still have to take out this low right here. Maybe trade 16 and a half or so. So that's a one hour. Four hour even gives me, gave me more conviction about this because look at this RSI reading, everybody. 21 on the RSI at the low. Markets don't bottom with 20 readings. Markets don't bottom without divergences, or at least not usually. So I believe we're going to get this completion move here this week. Uh, maybe it's uh, a dollar short setting up into an inflection point on the NFP as a possibility. Everyone, please give me a why if you're with me on that analysis of Euro, how it lines up with what Greg is saying. Also, uh, before I move on, today is the last day of the sale. Everyone know that? I want to thank people that went ahead and we got a, a ton of new members during this promotion. And I want to thank you for supporting our work. And all, you know what else? I want to congratulate each and every one of you that joined up because I believe it's a great investment in your future trading performance by having access to some great talent, practitioners of Elliot, like Grega, I know I would miss not seeing Grega's work and Nick's harmonics and Blake's work and Steve Sticks and Stelios's macro. So today is the last day. I'm not sure what time of day it ends, but I know it's the last day. So if you haven't done it, you're only talking about, you know, paying me a pip a month and everyone else a pip a month to share our ideas, to probably combine knowledge of over a hundred years. When you put all of us together, a lot of experience. Uh, so we have a hundred years of trading Nine, experience. Years of experience just from you, right, Dale? 99? <laughs> huh? Just from you. <laughs> 90, yeah, a hundred for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? But I don't feel it. So, uh, you know, we're only as young, as old as we feel, or being young that at heart. That is very true. That yeah, is very but true. I, you know what, Steve? I think it's true. I mean, you know, I, I bet if you add it up between all of us, it's 100. Uh, no, uh, no it, it, it definitely is 100 between us, yes. Because I think before I joined, I think part of uh, the website said 70 years, right? Of yes, exactly. That, that's, okay, yeah. so yeah, I, more, I, more than seventy I, years because I think we had added added the map. Yeah, the yeah, and uh, you know I've done my thirty-year uh, sentence, <laughs> 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 plus or minus. But yeah, but do you, know, you have the tattoos to show for it? I uh, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I tell you <laughs> what, though, the neo Nazi. I the I was I was very afraid of the neo Nazis when I was in jail. You know. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with the Colombians, what? <laughs> uh, you know what? Whoever would <laughs> stand <laughs> behind me was my friend. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, just a couple of other uh, markets that I'm stalking, and you guys may want to stalk. You know, uh, Steve's really—he's been long the dollar, so I know he's having a great day. But I know everyone's been kind of looking for, you know, where to sell Canada, where to sell Canada. And it's starting to shape up, okay? So we have a one, we have a two. Um, and I looked at some of Greg's stuff. We could uh, travel up towards 580 or so. Maybe there's another 80, 100 pips. So, you know, maybe you keyed off uh, when you think Euro is a buy, that Canada could be a short. And if it's not wave four, for a break to new low, 
just a correction of this wave to be a, a nice scalp. And then we're also at the do or die under the big round number in uh, the Aussie. So uh, looking, starting to get some divergence some non-confirmations, I think we'll take out the big round number. And the reason I think it's important, I'm pretty sure Steve would agree with me, is that it's this breakout area. So we're getting very close to the weekly breakout. So I'm, I kind of focus on commodity currencies here. And crude's under pressure, but I don't think it's a final top. I think it's a correction, and maybe that's what's going to push Canada up towards the 126 and a half level. Looks like I'm going to owe Steve a Coke on uh, the S&Ps. Uh, looked at some guys who still think there could be a pullback from here. Just a pullback, but eventually uh, Steve's numbers. I thought we'd get a pullback from last week before we started doing that. We could still do that without this being the final high. So uh, bonds still look negative. And those are my thoughts uh, going into all of this. But if you haven't seen it, it's your first day here at Forex Analytics. You picked a great day to come to face because this is the last day of this fit of this sale. Okay, and you know, if you're a new trader, a very good education section that will take you through everything. Sticks. Even if you wanted to learn some harmonic patterns to put into your toolkit, you know, we've got that here. If you want to become an, an uh, amateur, dangerous Elliott Wave analyst, which I classify myself at, you know, little knowledge is a dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> is a dangerous thing. So uh, those are my thoughts. I think Blake is still on the road after going to see his buddies in Minnesota. So uh, you know, that I'd is be... true. Blake Blake will be with us uh, in a few hours. From so now. you know, I mean, uh, uh, if, if you want to take over, Steve, that's cool. Or you know, you guys could start firing some questions away. Maybe uh, some of the charts, some of the things that you're first looking all, at. First of all, we, we have quite a lot of things to, to look at, but at the okay. same time, people, people can take advantage of uh, you know me doing my yeah. show here, showing some things that are already uh, you know um, okay. in my radar. Uh, we have a great then, interview uh, by popular demand, Victor Zubarev, the GAN guy, is going to be with us. With oh, a lot of his a lot of his targets. Last time he kind of, it was kind of an interview about his methods. Uh, today he's bringing some charts that are going to give some targets and projections. So some a I asked him for some actionable things and uh, he's going to bring it. So don't miss that either. Victor is, uh, and Victor suggested on Twitter this one book about psychology after I interviewed Mandy. You know, uh, the depressed coach that's going to help a lot of people, Steve. Say, say again, Dale. Sorry. Oh, when I interviewed Mandy, and she's a coach that you know helps. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that you actually, yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, he he tweeted a book, and a lot of people had a good response. I'll ask him about that book. It's about psychology. So he's read everything. You know, he's been around over thirty years, or a hundred like me. So. And, yeah. You know, as you very well know, longevity is, uh, you know, is extremely important in this business because there are a lot of people that don't make it past a few first years. And, you know, only for people to, to, you know, to make it in the markets for 30 years, it means that they've gone through the rough part. You know, they, they've they've learned the hard way of, uh, you know, how to how to treat the markets and, uh, you know, that. that well, you know that. They, they should have at least learned some things along oh, the sure. road. So, you know, sure. part of what I like to do, Steve, is, uh, you know, a lot of people have great methods for, you know, uh, triggers for trades and methods for getting into trades. Um, I think uh, what I like to do is help people avoid the landmines that I've stepped on, okay, because then they could have longevity. You know, it's a one mistake business. And so if I could help people avoid making a lot of the same mistakes I've made or the hundreds upon hundreds of traders that I've collaborated with over the years, um, First of I think all, that's, a big, that's a big edge for them. 
if I may say, Dale, the first thing for somebody to learn is that this should not be a one mistake uh, business. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I that's mean, a great point. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a great point. So people have to learn that right away. Yes, otherwise, exactly. you know, you know, if they that don't if, learn that right away, though, yeah, that, that if you trade in a way, some, yeah, that a mistake yeah. can uh, you know, get out of the game, and then it'll get cheaper, and they say, well, I could average out here. And the only reason I, I know this, I've seen it, I've, I've also done it. Well, if I liked it here, it's really a great value here. And before you know it, you're over leveraged, you have all your capital on one idea. You're yeah. stuck. Martin, you're, Martin, you're yeah, and you know what else? Uh, you're, you also suffer, besides principal loss, opportunity loss, because you're paralyzed and you've taken such a drawdown that you may see some great trades you're not even able to take take them because you're nursing um you know a cancerous position what do you Indeed. think of that metaphor <laughs> that's a good one actually <laughs> <laughs> anyway bro i'm very interested you know I, I i only have a few ideas coming in this week and with nfp so uh, I know I get clarity after I listen to you guys, so go ahead, bro. Show me what I should be paying attention to. Sure. Let me take the presenter Thank screen, you. and I'll show you quite a lot of things. Uh, first of all, I think that we should begin with the very, very, very basics. Okay. Um, when we turned lower on Thursday in the DXY, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I saw, and that, that was some kind of a confirmation for me, I saw a lot of people uh, turning bearish immediately because, you know, it's, it's, it's the syndrome of trying to yeah. be long the dollar and, and, and you know, getting it uh, on the head uh, time and time and time again. So, you know. The, the you know what, buddy, and I, I promise it'll be the last time that I interrupt you. I, I just want to ask everyone who's in here, um, you know what happens? And I, I was looking at the dollar at the bottom, and then I thought there'd be one more low. Sometimes you don't even know it, but because you you saw it but didn't act upon it, in this case, alongside the dollar, and it's been going up without you, there's something in your head that tells you, well, I'll have another chance, and it's going to pull back anyway. So you start playing, your original idea was to be long the dollar, you miss a dollar, you can't buy it here. So you're saying, now oh, you know what? Maybe it isn't so great. And you start shorting it, trying to make money on a counter trend trade because you really, because you missed one trade, you're making the decision to go the other way because you missed it. That's not a good contingency to trade on. But I've caught myself doing that. Yeah, I know you uh, haven't. I know you haven't. Nah, all of us have, have done the, the mistakes. I mean, it's, um, you know, you remember we have talked about that in the past, that uh, humans are not built by default yeah. to, to, to have the proper psychology to trade because, you know, our psychology instinctively forces us to make the exact opposite things than the things we should yeah. be doing. God, I've done them all. So uh, know, go, yeah. ahead. Go, go ahead, bro. I'm so sorry, uh, we reversed on Thursday, but on Friday we immediately, you know, created <laughs> the spinning top right on support, and we actually managed to close the week above 93. So you know that that was, you know, that was a, an important element. And today yeah. we we are pushing higher once again. Uh, so you know we we have the 38.2 uh, fib by the way. Mm -hmm. And this high, uh, both of them, uh, you know, very close to each other, like 94.20 and 94.30. For me, this is going to be, you know, the ultimate confirmation that uh, the dollar has uh, has turned. Uh, but as as you know, in, in quotes, I, I jumped the gun because you know I, I saw a lot of things from what I wanted to see. So I'm I'm already long the dollar um, against qu quite a few pairs. And you know we, we we're going to talk about about them, but anyhow, before I start showing at what I what I deem to be interesting, is first of all I want to remind that dollar did break above 93, which was like a first key level for us. It did close the week above it, and it is starting the week on the you know on the right side. So 
you know, so far, so good. We don't have the ultimate confirmation yet. It's a little bit higher, as I, as I explained. But, you know, we, we are putting one, uh, one little stone at a time. So having said that, um, everybody obviously has noticed that the euro has started weak uh, today. The Catalonia referendum and, you know, what we have there is to blame uh, somewhat. Um, mostly, actually, although I think it's generally dollar strength. On the other hand, the cable didn't react good to the miss of PMIs. Actually, it, re it reacted worse than I, than I expected. This is the only this is the only pair that I'm actually short um, the dollar uh, because I wanted to have some short dollar exposure as well. So I'm roughly 100 pips out of the money. Uh, actually, no, m more than that, like 100. And well, Greg, you know, well, Steve, you might get you might be okay on that because Greg is still looking for one more decline. And oh no, I, I'm okay. I'm okay in general because I yeah. wanted to. I wanted to upset. I, I'm I'm already short the dollar against the euro, against the Aussie, right. against the Kiwi, against the South African. Long, long. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, long the, the dollar right. against. The so this Greece. kind of gave your book balance. Uh, so, somewhat, because I'm yeah. I'm a lot more long the dollar than right. I'm short. This is the only pair I have short. Um, so um, and and it's also half position. But to be honest, half position is also my Aussie USD short, as I've said. Uh, my point uh, being, though, if Greg is right about one more decline in euro pound before a, a better rally, that would favor pound longs over. Uh, speaking euro and before so we maybe, go into details, speaking yeah. of the euro pound, because for the euro pound I don't have much to say. Uh, speaking for the euro pound, I see a lot of probabilities of uh, different kind of corrections here. From yeah. a very very bearish one that might might uh, bring another rejection from this zone and this little descending channel, which is the very bearish scenario, uh, yeah. to to a push a little bit higher to have like an uh, you know uh, an irregular type of um, uh, fourth wave correction. But regardless, as long as we remain below 89, 20, you know, I see I, I see absolutely no reason why somebody would want to be. Uh, wow. Along the euro pound, yeah, at this does not look like a bottom information. You know what I mean? No, no way in any chance. So I, I'm still short the euro pound. I didn't mention it because that's not dollar position. We're talking about dollar positions. Um, but uh, you know, I never managed to add back after I took 50% off. So this is also a 50% position. But I have to tell you that I will gladly add to it if we get. Uh, a retest of like 89.20 and I see a rejection from there. So I might uh, I might find that as an opportunity to add back my 50% position that I took profits. For another push, I would like to see at least this 61.8 at 86.80 being tagged. If not a little bit lower, they have this zone 86 and a half. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to see at least such a level being tested before uh, we get a bigger correction higher. But so far, I can count this as a five wave. I mean, I think that it's it's going to evolve to be a, a five wave. And that on its own is going to guarantee, if we confirm a fifth wave, uh, a fifth wave, uh, it's going to guarantee that uh, no matter what kind of a recovery we get later, we should we should then at least get one more bearish leg lower. So, you know, if this ends up being a five wave down, uh, then I will be more than confident that um, uh, I, I will be uh, wanting to take profits and look to resort uh, after we get another correction. Because even if that ends up being like an ABC, it's going to be like an A, a B, a C, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, this is what I, how I see the, the euro pound. Now having to do with the cable, for me, cable, I, I even you know, pushed a, uh, an update uh, just a while, before, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago, uh, saying that, you know, we're now entering a, a zone that should create at least, at least the very, very lit least intraday, uh, some kind of a reaction. So for me, if you started the week, the day, with, in a sense, uh, short, very nice. But getting short here, 
is is probably not a good idea. If if you believe that the cable you know is has more more uh, downside coming, then you should at least expect that we should get a reaction anywhere between here and 132. 40, 35, something like that, and then look to short that reaction if if you still like it to the downside. Okay, so I, I think the cable has already stretched quite a lot for so early in the day, and you know uh, there is no reward to risk ratio to be short intraday from this point on. Um, uh, so um, let's have a look at the Aussie and the Kiwi. Uh, for me, it's the same kind of situation, both of them, this is the Kiwi uh, and this is the Aussie, both of them uh, seem to have broken uh, below um, uh, their equivalent consolidations. Uh, this was an ascending wedge, in this case we had a first move lower, we had a corrective move higher and we seem to be breaking below it. Uh, now we, we're in a short-term consolidation, so both of them look decently good to me uh, to, you know, to be short. I'm, I'm already short both of them, actually. Uh, I'm only like 35 pips in the money in the Kiwi, but I'm a lot, lot more in the, uh, in the Aussie, and uh, I think that I will hold, the, especially the Aussie, I mean, I think that I will, uh, I will hold it for at least a retest of 0.7740. I think we're, we're going to get there. We're, we're already testing this low here and, you know, a daily close below it is going to, uh, you know, to, to be an extra confirmation for me. Ideally, I would want to even see, you know, uh, lower prices. So th this is what I would like to see, something like that, like a little retest here, an initial rejection. Uh, then, uh, you know, I would like to see this zone holding as a resistance and another move lower. So that, that, that's more or less how, how I have envisioned it. Um, so, um, okay, we covered this as well. Ah, yeah, the USD czar, I got, I got triggered on that Friday morning, my time long, because we retested this zone, actually. I'm long since 13.44, and uh, this is what I'm looking. I mean, we, we got this beautiful triangle breakout. Uh, we got a retest of this horizontal zone, and... You know, I would at least want to see a retest of that high over there at 1395. Um, and, you know, if you remember, I had specifically shown plenty of setups that were looking pretty good. The USD uh, Turkish Lira was one of them as well. Uh, the USD Rubble is, is, has not confirmed yet, you know, a break higher, but, uh, you know, is, is doing what it can to... Uh, rebound and the USD Singaporean dollar is is coming also very close to you know critical level. So you know we had all these pairs that that had started looking interesting. Uh, for me, as I had said, the USD czar uh, was by far the best uh, positioned to, from a technical perspective, and that's why I I I was lucky to get involved with that because I had put an order here and this little intraday week got me triggered long. I actually wasn't sure that I would get the opportunity, but I did. So um, I think the dollar, you know, looks better by the day. And now that you mentioned it, because of course it's also a product of that, this is the uh, this is what we what we have with uh, the treasuries. Let me show this because this is quite interesting. I have to say that the treasuries have you know have already confirmed a very nice bearish move. We had ten consecutive days lower here. Then we just got a two-day recovery, now we're pushing lower again, but I have to say that, on the other hand, we might get some kind of a pullback soon, because <laughs> this is an ascending channel that I'm monitoring, so this, on its own, you can call it like a very big, uh, prolonged, in that sense, big, this is a very prolonged corrective pattern, and, um, you know, we, we're getting close to the confluence of this low and the uh, trend line support so we might get some kind of a reaction here but even if we do i will still be looking for a move lower and uh, needless to say that you know if a break below this zone then gets confirmed i think that uh, you know i'm, I'm going to be 100 percent convinced that greg has been right all along that you know th this this should lead to new lows 
Anyhow, we've said many, many times that this kind of a pattern never looked impulsive, you know, especially given the fact that it has it had followed this kind of a pattern. So, uh, you know, unless something dramatic happens, I think that uh, the treasury still look good to the downside. Um, especially, you know, as I said, if you get some kind of some type of a rebound, um, I, I think it's a good opportunity. We said the same from here. To be honest, I expect that we might get more than two days of a recovery, but you know, the fact that the market just gave us two shows that you know the market still had a lot of momentum to the downside. Okay, so let's let's start having a look at a few questions. And oh, the DAX, yeah, first question, the DAX. And let's have a brief look at the indices in general. Okay, um, there is nothing to talk about the DAX yet. I can tell you one thing for sure. I'm expecting the DAX to pull back very, very soon. Even today, I mean, even even today's candle looks like a very nice candidate to, to start a pullback. Okay, because this move already from the uh, last, no, it wasn't the last, like one of the last days of um, uh, August, um, it was a very fast move higher. We expected that move. We had warned about this move. We had even given the levels. Um, the fact that the DAX corrected in in such a beautiful manner within within a corrective channel, uh, you know, a slow overlapping type of a correction. Then it slowed down. Momentum was lost. We just made a new low here, but just to wipe out people that were looking at the inverted head and shoulders. I was looking at it as well, but we never got got triggered because the neckline never broke. And then we broke above it, and boom, this is what you get. Okay, so uh, we we haven't broken above the highs, uh, but I can tell you one thing for sure is, and this is another example of seasonality, um, as I've talked about it plenty uh, of times. As you see, the DAX bottomed uh, at uh, the end of a month. So it started the month strong and it rallied for the whole duration of the month. But now, and good month, by the way, we've entered the new month. So it's a very nice period to see at least the beginning of some kind of corrective move. Okay. Having said that, I see absolutely no reason why I would be bearish the index, as I said uh, also when we were correcting here. I see absolutely no reason. I mean, I expect new highs to come. I wouldn't be long at current levels. I mean, I wouldn't establish a new as long at current levels. But to be honest, any pullback towards 12,500, 12,550, why not? I mean, it, it still looks bullish. We get corrective moves to the downside and in, impulsive moves to the upside, right? Uh, a, a simple confirmation of that is the following. Just look at this. We're back again at the highs, right? How long did it take us? It took us one month to um, retrace the correction lower that we had. But how long did the correction lower take? More than a month. Okay, it took like one and a half months almost. So, you know, obviously the momentum is, is still to the upside. Okay, so I remain bullish the DAX, but I wouldn't be buying at current levels. Any pullback? You see a reaction, I mean, you, you, you see some kind of a support working, like for example this one, sure, go ahead and be long. Uh, why not? I mean, uh, anyhow, it's the best looking of uh, uh, market having to do with valuations, etc. in comparison at least to, to the other popular ones. Um, the, S, the SPX has already started, by the way, hitting our first resistance level uh, levels, so uh, it's already hitting the, the channel resistance. Ideally, I would want I, I would want to see it tag uh, 2,535, which is the 161.8 of this move. Uh, but to be honest, any reaction from this point up to 2,535, um, you know, uh, is going to look good. Personally, I'm I'm sorting 2,535 if we get up there without even waiting for a reaction lower. I mean, I'll say I'll say it bluntly. I'm I'm going to be sorting that level no matter what. I'm not going to even wait for confirmation. I'll start with with half a half a position size, and you know, uh, 
try to to go through the technicals and f find another half position to put in. Uh, simply, I don't believe that uh, this move can extend much higher than that before we get a, a bigger pullback. Okay. Um, I think that this type of a move higher that we, we are seeing here, um, is, this type of grinding slow move higher is, is not sustainable. Not in the short term. I'm not, I don't mean that uh, I'm looking to find the top, um, but, but I'm looking for a correction lower. Okay, so... Uh, the NASDAQ, about Canada, uh, Steve. They yeah, want sure. to shorten it here at 25. My view is it's a little early. Uh, I, I'm thinking there's another 80 pips or so. Uh, we'll, we, we'll see it. By the way, NASDAQ, yeah, uh, NASDAQ finally. from a technical perspective, still looks yeah. bullish because it's it made a false break below this triangle, but it never confirmed it. Uh, and it's it's testing this resistance area once again. So Would you short NASDAQ the way you're shorting S&P, say like at uh, 1.272 since it's been weaker than S&P, is like at 6.059 is your 1.272? Uh, NASDAQ to me, if it doesn't get rejected from the current trend line once again, in which case I will be looking for a move like this, yeah. No, I wouldn't be shorting it immediately. I would be looking. 1.618. Yeah, for a last hurrah higher before okay. uh, doing that. You know, I would be looking Thanks. for something like that alternatively. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, that's Nasdaq as well. Uh, so let's let's have a look at the at the CAD, and uh, let's have a look at the NOC as well because it's also very interesting. Okay, uh, this is the USD card. Okay, um, first of all, the one critical level we had already said was the area of 124, 124.50. Okay, we're breaking above it. Um, the next major area for me is 128. That does not mean that we cannot get rejected from any point between here and there. Any point, even here. Why here? Because this is the 61.8 of this last um uh, bare leg lower okay oh, and we've yeah. already seen the past two days friday and thursday made an attempt to break above it both of both of the times we got rejected yeah um so uh, i'll tell you something dale can it move higher sure it can do i want to be long no i don't do i want to be short yes i do will i short it here no i won't um I'd rather get some confirmation and then get involved with it again. I was involved with it uh, a couple of times on the downside, even more with the USD knock. I find no reason why I should just try to time this, um, you know, reversal in advance. Let me see a big reversal candle uh, yeah. to, the, to the downside, and especially if it comes from a level that's of importance. For example, we have the 61.8. So we you're. Yeah, you're rejecting the you're rejecting the Canadian trade until you see a rejection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got exactly. you, buddy. Exactly. I mean, if we got rejected from 124, I would be immediately involved with it again. Immediately, no questions asked. But now that we are above it, you know, I'm not in a rush to be to be to be short the USD card. And more or less the same applies to the USD knock. Although, under circumstances, the USD knock can get me short even today. Why? Because we're back testing this eight level, which is like extremely, extremely critical. So far, I only see a corrective move higher. I mean, this is clearly a corrective pattern so far. You never know with the market because if we see like a, for some reason that I cannot think about it, like a huge acceleration from here, from where we are, then I will start counting this, for example, as a one, two, three. You know what I mean? But until something like that happens, I'm just seeing this as an ABC, you know what I mean? And an ABC that's already back at the eight level, I mean, let's say that it reverses even more from today and this closes like a shooting star, I might even sort it today, you know what I mean? So the USD knock looks better to me at the moment. And... Uh, that's what I'm looking. On the other hand, 
I also see the potential of a bigger rebound. Why? Because, for example, we might come down, retest this line, go higher, and keep on some kind of a choppy um, correction higher. So I'm not looking to get involved with the USD knock and the USD cut yet, although I'm very, very closely monitoring them because I had warned in advance ab about that, even, even when we were on an impulsive move lower, I do believe that, I did believe that at some point we were going to get a correction. There was no question about it. And I had, I, I had made very clear since then that I will not be looking to buy for the corrections, but I will be looking to resell for at least one push lower again. One more push lower, okay? So um, that, that, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to tell you when I, th I think it's, you know, the, the time has come. Okay, uh, people are asking about the euro yen, and I, I already issued an update about the euro yen. Uh, and you won't be able to see it clearly here because on the daily chart, you can see that this is some type of a consolidation here. Um, and, you know, we have this trend line, but you will be able to see it very clearly here, which is the four hour chart. And you will see that the euro yen. actually probably wants to go lower because this you remember Dale we talked about it on Friday as well I mean this is in no way an impulsive pattern this little pattern especially followed by the short-term impulsive move that we got from there so I'm still of the opinion that the euro yen will most likely than not produce uh, at least one more push lower before higher. Okay, so uh, my money, no, actually that's wrong because I don't have a position. But if if I had to have a position, I wouldn't even think about being short. I mean, it's it's a clear option here for me. It, it's, it's, it's a clear option. I mean, uh, being long after this kind of little pennant, no, no way. No way. Would they be short on the other hand? No, I, I find I see better trades there because this might be like a last push lower before higher once again. So uh, I, I think that the next move is going to be lower and we see what happens from there because this might end up being just an ABC. You know what I mean? But the next move is, in my opinion, 70% lower. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. Gave a pretty yeah. good entry zone too at 33. So I mean Speaking here... If people are worried about it, and you know, Greg is pretty uh, strong on the end here, as well as Nick, you could always take half. Speaking speaking about it, and for people that yeah. are on Forex Analytics, I'm unfortunately, um, Blake is not here yet, and you know, I lost this last part of the move while we, <laughs> we are on the webinar. Uh, otherwise, I would have made a, like a short-term pattern in play here. Uh, I had issued an update when we were testing this neckline. I also wrote yeah. it on the chat room. This is a very nice head and shoulders formation. It's not a huge one. It's like it has a 300 pip target. Measures uh, to the breakout. Yeah, roughly it does. I mean, it measures a little bit lower than the breakout, but yeah, sure. Why not? You see, this is exactly what I wrote. I wrote that uh, a break below 150. That's exactly what we got while we we're on the webinar. Um, a break below 150 should bring us down, uh, you know, uh, the, the target is 300 pips, but personally, I would be very, very happy to be long at 147.50 if we get there, because it's this extremely, extremely technically important trend line resistance, which this time has a very, very good chance of acting as support. Okay, so... Uh, I see a very clean short-term short trade lower and then a very nice medium-term trade higher. Yeah. Okay. Like it. Same here. Okay, now let's talk about the big pain. My, 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 the big pain in my heart at the moment. Yeah, I'm kidding. I, you know, I, uh, I've expelled FOMO in a, in a big extent. But I'm really, 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 really pissed with my bad luck of not catching this. I was out. I really loved this trade, this one. You remember we were looking at crude 
Yeah. And I, I was looking at this very nice confluence here because we had the 161.8 at 5330. We yeah. had the uh, equality target at 5307. Uh, of it, it was actually, you know, the the target of the head and shoulders. Uh, I mean, the equality of, uh, you know, uh, the distance from the head to the neckline, etc., etc., etc. And um, you know, this was a very nice confluence. And uh, I, I Maybe was look it's still get there, Steve. It's like retesting a uh, kind the, the, of breakout area. You don't think so? Yeah, it does. It does, and it might. But th this trade now has been lost for me. I mean, yeah. I really wanted to short uh, here, yeah. and I would be willing to short higher as well because this area, I was pretty convinced that this area would create at least a reaction down to here. You know what I mean? As you right. called it, the breakout area. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, that was lost because the move higher happened and got retraced within like a few hours, and I was I was out of the office. Uh, <laughs> Um, but you know, still, I, I like the fact that I saw this very nice setup. I missed it, but it still worked out pretty nicely. And if you remember, we have been following crude quite closely, and you know, we've uh, we, we've been doing good in predicting what it's going to do, which shows to me that this market still remains very well behaved. I mean, for somebody zooming out, they're going to say that it's very choppy, but if you if you look closer at the moves all of them are technically very sound. I mean, we're getting quality targets, we're getting channeled moves that work very nicely, the move lower was channeled, and you know the channel was one of the factors that gave us a confluence of the reversal higher. Uh, this maybe, one this not... pull, maybe this pullback's just given the bears one more dash of hope. That, you know, the, a lot of them sort of thrown in the towel at 51, 52, might be. I'm, there's, I'm and, sure there's stubborn bears. Because you know what, Steve? It kind of looks like upper 50s coming down the road if it doesn't collapse from here. Yes, yes. If it doesn't collapse from here, I agree. And keep in mind that this is not a place to be short anymore in the short term because simply, as you very well said, we are now testing uh, a resistance, now support area. So people should be in the short term. Uh, really careful. Let's see what happens from here. Um, you know, to determine what what's going to happen next. I might still be looking to short this. Depends on what happens from this point. Meaning, if I get a nice reaction from this zone, and then I see a reaction lower from that <coughs> zone, then I will like to be short from there looking for a move down back to 49 okay mm -hmm. so there might still be a trade here uh let me see questions pound swiss yeah pound swiss sure let's have a look at it Okay, this is the pound Swiss. Uh, we broke above this triangle. We're obviously correcting lower. How the hell do I know this is a correction? Simply, one, two, three, four, five. That was a very nice five wave move higher. And so far, what do I see here without even needing to zoom in the four hour chart? ABC. I, I see an A, I see a consolidation for a B, and I likely see a C. So, would I be short this thing? No, I would not. So, Steve, okay. all you really need to know are, is the alphabet and be able to add, subtract, and multiply and divide <laughs> the trade. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> no, really, honestly. You know, I'm, I'm very good at maths and... Um, uh, sciences, but trust me, you do not need to be a rocket scientist or anything to trade. Mental attributes are extremely more important than anything else. Trust me. 
I've seen people do very well in the markets that have, have had no studies that are related to uh, finance, economics, or whatever, and are not even good at uh, at maths. Okay, you don't you don't need it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, mental attributes. I repeat, mental attributes, experience, and uh, patience are far more important elements. Honestly. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey, everybody. If I may just add, personally, the best trader I've ever seen in my life uh, in, in the bank was uh, a psychologist, ex-psychologist turned trader. So I am with you 100% on what you say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. No, it, it really doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> I bet you were on the couch for a few days, Stel, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get some uh, time with him, but he was very senior, so it was a very difficult guy to get a hold of. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure it was more about women than markets, but go ahead, Steve. <laughs> uh, okay, let's have a look at the Eurocad uh, as requested from um, Ahmed. Uh, let's let me see the Eurocad. Okay. Yep. Let's go. Eurocad. Okay, Eurocad. I remember the last time we talked about Eurocad, we were exactly there. And I said that, listen, we're in the middle of a zone, but if I had to be something at current juncture, I would be short because we were we had this confluence of the 50 DMA and this zone that had uh, acted as support. That worked. I mean, worked. It pushed somewhat lower. Now we're up there again. So I'm going to give you the exact same answer. I wouldn't be involved here because we are within a choppy range. Pa, 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 pa. You see this? But on the other hand, we are again uh, testing soft resistance. So I wouldn't be involved, but if I had to be involved, I would be short again. OK. Um, personally, unless we close above 150 uh, or we close below 144.50, I don't really see a trade here. Too choppy for my taste. OK. So my personal advice, my friendly advice, is look for something uh, more clean uh, to trade. But if you if you have to do something with it, I guess being short here is a much better idea than being long. Uh, FTSE, yeah, sure, let's go. Let's go, let's have a look at our beloved FTSE. One thing I can tell you about the FTSE is that it's accelerating higher, uh, so that makes me a little bit skeptical of the, if this resistance is going to hold, but I can tell you, uh, tell you as a fact that this zone is resistance. So uh, as long as we're close to 7,450, I think that being long is not a, a smart idea. So um, two You're choices. buying the weakness. You're buying the weakness. So you the DAX, S&P, everything, it's yeah, a so weak sister. Yeah, so you either sell here, uh, hoping <coughs> for this big pattern as we were in, we had envisioned it to to create a big head and shoulders formation. We had talked about that probability since we were there, plays out. Or if we get a breakout from here, wait for it to retest the zone before going higher. So that's what I see. So you know, if 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 I had if I had to have a position right here right now instantly, I would be short. Okay, but I don't like it anyhow. I mean, I want to see more clarity. I would, I would rather see a rejection from here and, you know, see uh, this head and shoulders uh, getting uh, confirmed. And then, I would love, I would love to be short on a break from this if we actually get, you know, a shoulder as well for a big move lower. Yeah. You know, that would almost imply. Uh... Maybe a pretty good move to the upside in pound because it seems like it has its worst days when the pound is. Yes, of course, uh, it's showing it's, a lot it's, of strength. Yes, of so. course, of course, they they, they have a, a rather strong inverse relationship. Yeah. Um, this I, this is I from more. Should, sorry, I think we should uh, probably wait for November. Maybe that will be the trigger a month from now. You know, if they hike, then that Definitely. might be the trigger. Definitely. I, I personally, oh. I am. Yeah, go on. De definitely, Stelio. I mean, what they do in November is going to be critical, also for the market's perception, as you very well said. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, by the way, this is uh, this is a weekly uh, chart from our friend Ronit. Uh, he says uh, dollar at a critical level. Okay, this yeah, is he very. Thinks it's gonna, he thinks that was the bottom, and we're we're setting up for a super bull move in the dollar now. I would be very skeptical of a super bull move on the dollar. Very. Personally, uh, talking about medium to long term, I'm I, I'm uh, bearish the dollar. Um, uh, personally, um, I, but I, you know I, something. I, yeah, but you know something. I I don't really care. I mean, I have long term I have long term um, ideas, but I never trade them. It's not that I'm going to enter a position now in the dollar and wait to see what's going to happen in two years. So you know, I always have a long term bias as well. But I never trade just on a long-term bias and nothing else. The reason I have a long-term bias is be besides the fact that I cannot do something not to have it. Because when you're involved with the markets and you're also play paying attention to the macros, etc., you know, of course, you will inherently end up with some kind of long-term idea. The the only reason it's useful is the following: is that when you end up getting trades that you like, that also. Um, go well with your long-term thesis, you have an extra uh, benefit that if actually the long-term thesis starts playing out, you might have entered the trade looking to make X and you might end up making like multiple times X. You know what I mean? That's a benefit there. Uh, by the way, um, we showed it on Friday, but we didn't do it today. And uh, coincidentally, nobody asked, although they asked for other yen pairs. USD yen is still in an ascending wedge. And um, I have to yeah. say that I have to say that if we get a reversal of risk today, you know, you can even draw it like this. Yeah. And if you do, if you we were looking for this. It, yeah, if you draw it like this, somebody can even say that it w it wasn't an ascending wedge. It broke down and it retested it, and it's getting rejected. No matter how you do it, I'm really paying attention to it because in the short term, if we get some type of risk off, it yeah. looks good. Okay. It looks good for a retracement back to one ten seventy, in my opinion. This is a nice zone here. And that's what kicks in the euro yen short to go those levels you were talking about. Buddy. Why not? Definitely. Yeah, this, uh, I think this is the uh, spouse of the trade that takes it there. Correct. Correct. Um, sorry, have you already discussed gold? No, we haven't discussed the precious metals. Thank you for reminding me because we also had a, a question about uh, palladium, which I, I completely forgot. I'm very sorry about that. You used to see a lot of great concerts at the palladium. <laughs> Tell me, man. <laughs> so let's have a look. Let's have a look at the precious metals, all of them, since since we're talking about them. First of all, gold. Okay. Um, gold doesn't look good. Gold doesn't look good at all. Um, although I'm, I am monitoring this trend line that was acting as a triangle trend line, besides the fact yeah. that we penetrated below it. And if the yen uh, breaks down, it'll pop. I, I'm look, I think we could get a pop here, Steve, yes, because that, that, of the yen. I agree with you. That's what I want to say. Listen, I would not be gold. I would not be short gold here. No chance in a million. But if I see a reaction from here higher and some some kind of a, re a rejection from there, then I will be looking for much lower in gold. Okay. And I might, I might even look into getting involved with it. So um, I think that a rebound should find resistance anywhere between 1300 and 1310. And if you do see a, re a reaction from this general area, looking lower again is going to be a good idea. So that's what I see in gold. Silver, more or less, more or less the same kind of situation. Um, any type of a reaction towards 1720 could bring another leg lower. 
Okay, now uh, we had a friend that asked about palladium, and I can say that he's saying that another short is sitting up here, and yes, this is an area of interest, and this area can bring a reaction from here. On the other hand, we might get a push higher again, so, you know, uh, you need to be careful here, but I can tell you one thing for sure. This area is extremely critical, as you can see from here. So the 9-10 area is very critical. If we get a break below the 9-10 area, I'm looking for the uh, next area at 8.30 to be tested. Okay, so this is, this is the confirmation for me here. Now, uh, nobody asked, but let's have a look at copper as well. Copper is chopping around in the area I was waiting to create a reaction, and the more it consolidates here, the more likely in my mind that we need to at least push lower once again. So th the longer we consolidate without strongly rebounding higher, the more convinced I'm getting that it needs to uh, push one lower once again. This also goes very nicely with my thesis in the Aussie, uh, Aussie USD. Okay. Pound Kiwi. God, we have a lot of questions suddenly. Let's go. Okay, Pound Kiwi. Nothing to see here. Why nothing to see here? Because simply until somebody else proves something differently, I just see a triangle here. So uh, I would like to see a reaction from the bottom of the triangle. And th actually, I don't need to, dis to, 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 to say anything in words. This is what I would expect, what you're seeing here. I had drawn it since days ago, since we were uh, near the highs. So why not a move lower, a retest of uh, this area? This area might fail, but I will still be bullish. Why? Because this is also a viable possibility. So we might go a little bit lower and test this trend line, and this proving, instead of a triangle, to be a bull flag, okay? But until I see these levels fail, I'm still looking higher exactly as, as I've drawn on the chart. Uh, okay, Ronit is sharing his view on crude. Let's have a look at it. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. This, this is a very valid interpretation, this long-term triangle, and there is absolutely no question that the break uh, uh, above uh, the resistance that we were very, very, very close before we pulled back uh, would be extremely critical. I agree with you. On, on my weekly chart, I'm, I'm seeing the, the exact same thing, uh, Ronit. Thanks for pointing it out. Crude, copper, and other theses, which makes us believe that the CRB is turning down. Might be, might be the case. Might be the case. Let, let's see how it extends, though. And nothing will go in a straight line anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ronit also is setting his goal view. Let's have a look at it. Yep. Yep, I agree with you. There is more downside for gold. I mean, there, there is leeway for more downside uh, and still remain in like a big, choppy consolidation. I agree with you. This rejection was very nice up there from this confluence of uh, resistances. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So let me see. I'm I'm sure I might have lost a couple of questions. Like I forgot the uh, yeah, test. Nope. I think now actually we covered them all. Okay. Perfect. Do you have your guest here, uh, Dale? I think we we covered all questions. Dale. Maybe he's gone to the toilet. <laughs> Most likely than not. Okay. Um, let's let's have a look at a couple of pairs until he's back. But I know that people are usually asking for some reason they didn't do for some reason they didn't do so today. Uh, it's the Aussie uh, yen and the Kiwi yen. Um, the Aussie yen is actually 
and I don't support at the moment. So watch current levels for a reaction. But if we penetrate below them, uh, you know, I, I expect the, the move lower to extend to there. And the Kiwi Yen. What I see in the Kiwi Yen is something like this. Okay. So I think that uh, you know they both can can bring more downside, especially the Kiwi Yen. Uh, I think I'm going to get involved with that sooner rather than later. If you look at it. From a technical perspective, the Kiwi Yen is extremely, extremely interesting. Why? Because we have at 83.50 a very well-defined, very critical resistance zone. And on the other hand, we have a support area, which also confluences with this uh, horizontal support that passes from 79 at the moment. So for me, any break above there or below here is going to, uh, to bring um, a big movement in the market. So either above there or below here, I think that a break will be worth a lot of pips. Yeah, it's a big formation. Yeah, it's a very big, it's, it's a very big prolonged formation. And I'm really, really closely monitoring at this. We're currently at the middle of this range. So I'm not expecting something to happen imminently, but this formation is closing. I mean, it's tightening. And uh, when it does break, I'm definitely getting involved with it, either short or long. Okay, well, obviously, Steve, obviously okay. a big risk of move through the markets is right. gonna create this kind of a move, right? Yeah. And this is gonna be a great, great trade for risk off great trade amazing because the yen is the second best um, um, risk of currency to be bid after the Swiss, in my opinion and uh, the kiwi is one of the best candidates of the popular uh, currencies to be sold so i would really love to see some kind of a big risk of move coming and this support giving way I, i'm i'm gonna be all over this pair okay Dale, thank you very much mate and great job pulling double duty steve augie everyone thanks steve uh, he covered the whole board in 45 minutes i think he answered every question he's the fx answer man so thanks a lot steve victor i see you in the house bro i'm gonna make you the presenter now so back by popular demand is Victor Zubarov, Twitter handle at Victor Zubarov. And last time I kind of cut him off in the middle of his PowerPoint presentation. And Victor says he has some very interesting stuff to share with us today. So waiting to hear your voice, my trading warrior brother. Okay, good morning, thank you, Dale. Appreciate oh, hi, Victor, how are you, buddy? How's it going? I'm real good. Thank you for the second invite. I really appreciate it because I can cover some more ground that I would would have loved to cover the last time. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, share your screen and uh, you know you, there was a great response to your first interview and I know you didn't get through the presentation. Um, so you know it's thank you for after going through the experience of being interviewed by me to um, to be willing to go through that experience again yeah. so I, I'm not gonna sing this time so that's okay um, I, I, yeah. I think uh, you're I think you're uh, 25 uh, with a bullet on the billboard 100 this time. okay thank you buddy so uh, I think today you wanted to focus uh, not as much on uh, fishing metaphors which is your methodology <laughs> of the river and uh, I really I really love the metaphors you use for your methods of trading uh thank I'm you still waiting to see it's because i'm not on the screen is it? Uh, first of all dale can you see my screen i can't okay. i'm wondering why can anyone else okay let me see why 
Probably me. Um, I and everyone, sure. no, Tom Lano can't see it, so you have to click the screen share. Can you see it, Steve? No, no, I can't. Yeah, um, okay. So what what you need to do, um, uh, Victor, yeah. is is click on um, the show screen option. It's under okay. the tab setting. So on the right on the right hand on the panel from there you go. Yeah, there you okay. go. Now I think you got it right now. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, yeah. Steve. Okay, thank you, Steve. thank you very much. Thank you. Oh well, what I'd like to do, uh, Dale, is uh, um, uh, I'm going to have some uh, slideshow charts. Okay. Uh, and today I would like to talk about uh, one of my uh, screens that I call the uh, VZ's uh, Weekly Special Edition. Okay. And I'll explain that in a minute, and then I will switch to uh, live charts uh, because I want to talk about the importance of GAN's insistence that people would always have to and should look at a yearly chart, a monthly chart, even a quarterly chart, and a weekly chart. And then if they're working with their daily charts or even in a day, they would want to be aware of where all of these levels exist. And this is true because when I was a, when I was a runner at the, the Mid-Am Exchange, everybody had their little pieces of paper on the floor and they had basically they had the previous days high low and close yeah they had the the, the previous weeks high and low and, and close they even had the monthly high and low and close because they didn't want to get stopped out at a major major level that corresponded to one of the uh, higher time frame uh, pivot levels so I will go over that with you and then if you don't mind give me about uh, if, when I have five minutes left I want to share with everyone uh, my method of calculating the what you've probably seen on some of my tweets, the mini ES's um, the price level uh, equates to a longitude on a 360 degree zodiac dial um, and how I do the calculation. So everyone by the end of this presentation will probably be able to do it themselves and i will give wow. you two examples of that so if i i'll need okay, about five okay i'm not so, going to um, i'm not going to interrupt you i'm not going to interrupt okay. you so just you know just uh work okay. through it I, sounds like a great presentation okay so the first thing i'll do is i'm going to go through some of the screens that i i, I thought i would like to cover using the vz special edition chart and that's the uh, Bitcoin screen, the ES screen, the gold screen, uh, the um, IWM screen, the 10-year note screen, and the DXY screen, and finally the US-Japanese uh, uh, pair. Uh, if that's too much there, you tell me which one you want, but I definitely want to cover BTC and ES and gold right now. So here we go. Okay. Here is the uh, special edition chart that I designed for uh, tracking um any instrument on a weekly basis and if you see where the uh, green and red uh, uh, shaded arrows cover the uh, uh, upper or lower triangles those are important pivot points for me and if you notice i'm going to put a uh, sorry let me get back to that chart uh, if you notice that the uh the low made in july there's a green pivot there at the bottom yeah. crosses the river and then uh, we would take a, tra a long trade once it crossed the river and the triangle um, closed above the top of the river which is the upper you know uh, blue line um, now we reached the high up in um, late August and we dropped into the river and we made a, a pivot low in September and now we're kind of like in the middle of the river but I use a weekly chart because it tells me when I trade on a daily basis or, or uh, in a day where these levels occur. It's always written down in front of me because I want to know if I'm getting into some sort of major pivot reversal area. Okay, I'll go to the next chart and that is a... Um, so that Bitcoin, where it's at right there, it's neutral for you. Yes, it's neutral, but I will I will cover it. I will okay. cover that in just a moment. But let me get back to the other charts here. Sure. Um, 
here's here's the ESs. This chart goes all the way back to March. Um, there, there, there looks like there was a double bottom back in, Mar in March and also in April, and then we took off. And Dan always says, always buy a double bottom, and he says, always sell a double top. That's one of his firm rules, and I see it all the time. I think the only time there's an exception is usually about 70% of the time it's, a, it's, a, it's accurate, 30%, it doesn't work. So, um, and here's where it didn't work. work uh, if I'm putting my cursor over here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, the looks like the uh, August pivot high and um, the September breakout. You would expect the double top there reaction, but it didn't didn't react. It actually moved higher. Um, what I like about these charts is when you see a I'm going to put a cursor over this one right here, which is the August uh, weekly uh, uh, pivot there high. There's a um, there's a red, there's a triangle covered with a red uh, pivot, and uh, it actually moved below the river and actually created another pivot at the same time. So there is what I call a, a rare double pivot candle, because that on that week we not only had a triangle at the top here at the red section, we also had a triangle at the bottom. That's pretty rare. When I see that, it tells me that the market probably made a high first then crossed the river and made a low and, and, uh, and created this, the, uh, the lower triangle. And that is very bearish. And actually that, that worked out as a bear signal right there because the next week we had a, even a lower low. Okay, let me go to uh, another chart here. I'm gonna do gold here. And I think I heard your last uh, presenter and I think if I remember his name uh, is Stilianos. Yeah, that's Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, okay. He said that the gold chart does not look good, and I agree with him. It does not look good. Here's the weekly uh, uh, special edition for gold. Uh, let's see if we have any special pivots here to talk about. Uh, but um, we had a double, we had a triple bottom right here, back here, back here, and here. We had a triple bottom. And what does Gann say about triple bottoms? He says that you should buy a triple bottom. The only problem he has is with a when when the market makes a fourth attempt to touch that low, you know, then it's a, he says it gets dicey. But in this case, his his rule worked because we had a triple bottom right here in uh, in July, and that's right on this 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 pivot here. Uh, so we had a move up. We went through the river. We're we're now trading for all of July and August above the river, and uh, that's a very strong uptrend when you're trading above the river every week. We finally made a, a pivot high way up here and uh, looks like right at the end of August. And then we started to collapse. We went through the river and now we're now trading below the river. Did your work, did your work predict that pivot high up there with the red air? Or were, no. I'm, cause you're above the river. Was there anything back then telling you that gold could be vulnerable? That's a great question, and the answer to that is because I'm looking at my notes. I was making my notes last night, and uh, I'm trying to find if I can get you the answer to that. But if I don't have the answer, I will tell you that the, the method that I use to uh, square numbers, and I would square a number off of this pivot low here where the arrow is, and I would project 180 degrees or 360 degrees or 720 degrees. And if I get to a level which is um, – the 180, the 360, the 720, the 1080. I'm looking for a change and a reversal. So I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll probably have to tweet it for you because I don't want to okay, go but, uh, so, but it, Even if you didn't, two weeks later, you're in the rib, back in the river. That's where your work was uh, definitively negative, right? Right. When, there, when, when we fall back into the river, something's happening and there's a transition. I used okay. to call it the red zone, but I don't call it that because I don't like what's going on in NFL right now. But <laughs> that's my little joke there. But anyway, uh, yeah. When, hey, I'm, uh, into the I'm river, taking a knee during the broadcast here, buddy. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's real good. I like that. I, I, someone asked me uh, if I took a knee because they know I've been talking about the subject all week long for a few weeks. I said the only time I take a knee, pal, is when I go to church. I knew you were going to say that. 
man. Okay. And, and yeah. Well, all right. So yeah. So that's a very good observation. The observation is, how do I use these? This this screen. I use it with a uh, GAN square nine, and I start calculations at pivot. So I I'll calculate off of this low. I'll calculate off of this low. I'll cal cal calculate off of this high, and I'll start to calculate the downside off of this pivot high here. So let me go to another one here real quick for you. So I have left. Um, we covered gold. So do uh, you want to do uh, IWM? Sure. The same thing with IWM. We had um. Get it back. Yeah. It's IWM. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We've got this. That's a Russell was... for anyone who doesn't know the ETF. That's domestic stocks that usually do better when the dollar's stronger. So go ahead. That's buddy. right. All right. So I'm, and I've got a dollar screen coming up too. Uh, well, I would do a calculation off of this pivot low here where the green, the green uh, arrow covers that triangle there at the bottom of the, of the candle. And you notice there was a transition period. We went into the river right here. We broke out of the river, and I would use the um, close. Well, in this case, I would, I would, uh, it closed inside the river. I would wait for it to trade above in, uh, the river the next week, which is right here. And if it's trading above the river, I would take this trade as a long trade because it's, it's got my qualifications. On a weekly basis, we're trading above the top of the river line, and we've got trying, we've got uh, confirms uh, of uh, up triangles. Uh, this week and the following two weeks. And I would also then do my calculations the square of nine off of this pivot and see where 180 and 360 come in. And if they're coming in, um, I'm gonna be looking for a possible reversal. Doesn't always uh, will happen, but here's the other converse of that uh, approach. If you break through a 180 going on the upside or a 360 and, uh, and it's solid, you know you're going higher. That's the beauty of this method is that um, it's a resistance that is created at the natural 180, 360 levels um, or even 720 levels. But when they break through there, you're going higher. That's what has amazed everyone about this uh, market over the last, what, six years from the 20, mm -hmm. 2011 low? Yes. I think that's what's amazed everybody that keeps going higher. But uh, that's my observation about uh, how, I, how I use the uh, – uh, the 180 and 360 levels. I think they're very important to watch. And uh, there's also one other method that I have that I use in conjunction with this, and it's called the VZ Kronos method. And um, if people are interested uh, in that, they'd have to contact me. I'll have my uh, email address and uh, Twitter handle posted later. But the VZ Kronos method actually does a Fibonacci count. A Fibonacci count is um, from uh, major pivot lows to major pivot highs. But there are four other additional Fibonacci number, mm -hmm. numbers that I discovered that are not ever mentioned anywhere in any books that work. So that's that's why I call it the VZ Kronos method because Kronos refers back to the planet Saturn, which is the planet of time. And uh, I think Gann was very fond of uh, the, uh, the uh, cycle that, that the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn make in in their um, circle around our sun. And he felt that was a natural uh, cycle that uh, you would have to want to pay attention to and see if you can compare it to market cycle highs and lows based on aspects that those two planets make in the course of, uh, you know, uh, trading uh, history. So is that, um, is that where, when those two planets are in oppositions, that it's even more critical? Yeah, they could be in oppositions to each other. They could be conjunction, which is, means that they're both together at zero, zero degrees conjunction. They could be at but 90 what are, degrees. What are the oppositions that people read about in the Farmer's Almanac? Is it the opposition to Earth when you, we get these planetary oppositions? Usually they're, they're, oppositions to, uh, uh, they're oppositions to selected planets to each other. Okay. There's also right. what they call, they, in the almanac, they usually use a uh, what they call a geocentric method, but there's also a heliocentric method, which does not yeah, account sorry. for retrograde motion of the planets, which can actually use both a heliocentric and a geometric um, 
uh, um, uh, not almanac, but ephemeris. Um, okay. But when, and I will show you uh, an example of the geocentric uh, yeah, at the end here when we talk about the conversion of uh, price to uh, longitude with uh, with okay. a uh, easy program that's called PlanetWatcher.com. Okay, let me go to another chart here. Uh, let's look at the 10 year note because I think that's one of my favorites to actually talk about because if you look, the pivot high was made back in, in uh, late August. It's right here. Yeah. And we're down here now. So we had a transition week, which is this, this big uh, wide, wide range weekly bar when we pushed through it and we went underneath the river. And now it looks like we're making a double bottom between this and this pivot here and possibly this one here. So uh, watch for a reaction here and see what happens. But if this breaks down further, it, we're going back down to here. See that back in right. March. Yeah. So my my so this chart looks kind of like the gold chart if you if you look at the gold weekly chart because the uh, the right side of the chart always the toughest chart to trade because that's the unknown part of your chart. Um, so you you look left a lot in your analysis, don't you? Yes, I do. But what I what my goal is to make a chart as as uh, clean and clear and easy to uh, uh, use, so that when I'm looking at the right hand of the chart, I basically know based based on previous pattern recognition, which is a, a title of a book by one of my favorite sci-fi authors, William Gibson, which has nothing to do with trading, but I thought I'd bring it in there. But anyway, okay. um, he. Uh, the, yeah, the right side of the chart obviously is the toughest chart, to, the toughest part of the chart to, to, to analyze because you don't know what's going to happen next. So these charts that I've developed help me set up the rules. I always use the, you know, once I put the chart together, I have a set of rules that I always uh, abide by. And that, this is what I look for. I look for patterns that I've seen in the past, like you said, the left side of the chart and see what happens. So um, uh, the 10-year note is in definite trouble. And uh, the high was made back in uh, late August. So, you know, let's see what happens this week with um, the dollar. And I think I have a dollar chart next. Yes, I do. Okay, so this is the weekly special edition chart. I call it special editions because um, I realized that Gan had, had mentioned that um, he had a look back period of three. Uh, he later changed that in one of his books that he wrote to his um, uh, clients that maybe they should be using a look-back period of only two. But I, I use a look-back period of three. And that means I go back three, three candles. And if the candle that you're looking at here, right there, takes out this candle, this candle, and this candle's high, it gets a triangle. Wow. Okay. And so, so we have a we have a, a bottom made here. Uh, looks like the beginning of September, and we go through the river, and now we're trading on the upside because we we look to see if this candle closes um, on the um, above above the river, and it has a it has a confirmed uh, up triangle. So we would be long right now. I, I don't know how long this will last, but. Uh, we would have also been working at um, uh, computing the uh, square of nine levels down here to see where, where it hit here. But I wanted to go to the, uh, let's see what I can do here. Oh, one more chart here. I don't know, you have to help me with this, this chart, Dale, because it, this looks very, very um, choppy. Oh, it's like we're in a is. trend, you know, we're, we're in a, we're in a, we've, since all of this year, we've been uh, sideways chopped. And these yeah, are so I guess it's all going to come down to if you're right about a bounce in the bonds, right. then this then this could head down. Right. It could so head down. And if you're and and it but and but if you're right about gold being bearish, this should head up. Right. That's right. And uh, so I'm I'm so what I what I do is this is what I do. I well I'll show you on another chart here in a moment. We'll go to the uh, monthly and the uh, examples but I would look at this pivot low and I would look at this pivot high and I would write down the high of this bar and the low of this bar and I would take that and divide it in half uh, 
Gann said you could make a fortune just trading the 50% line. So I would take the high of this bar, write that number down, take the low of this and have it in front of me. And then I would divide that range in the two parts and see where we're at today. And if we're, if we're above the 50, if we were at a 50% line, I would have taken the trade and gone long, which looks yeah, like it might about be about 111. Here. So, yeah. Yeah, 111. Interesting. And yeah. back under 111 would be a short. Right. It would be a short. That's All that's right. exactly right. And if you just use that one rule, you don't have to get crazy and esoteric with Dan. You could, what I what I did when I learned uh, GAN, I just picked out the things that I could understand and made sense to me right away. I wasn't going to uh, learn the whole, uh, you know, his whole repertoire because that could that could drive you crazy. Yeah. Uh, so that was my method. And uh, so yeah, you're absolutely right. We're in a trending, we're sideways trend range. So what do you do? You trade you you trade the top and the I mean the, the highs and the lows of the of the uh, of the channel. Okay. And this this. Uh, weekly chart helps you define very clearly, you know, it gets rid of the uh, the noise and it oh, helps you God. stay in the trade in effect. So um, let me see what I can do now. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to jump to uh, jump to my screen. And I, I promised people that I would talk about Bitcoins because I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what do you think of it? Yeah, I think okay. it's a cra I think it's an insane, crazy situation with Bitcoin, because it's it's uh, something that professionals can't get a handle on, and then you find out that Jamie Dime Jamie Diamond bashes it, but yet the London office has been trading it, and then you hear stories about people, you know, uh, uh, regulators getting ready to come down on Bitcoin in, in China and, and curtail the exchanges to uh, trade it in. But here's um. If you can see the screen, this is yes. the uh, Bitcoin one-year chart. So wow. I put, obviously this chart is exaggerated because all the action has basically happened, you know, this year. But if you had just been sitting there like like somebody that uh, doesn't trade too often and traded the highs of each year, you would have gone uh, long right, right there. You would have gone long right there. Um, and uh, and if we you finish had, like this, you go long at the end of the year. Here, that's true too. So let's what I do next. I change the uh, one year and I change it to a quarterly, because because a lot of people don't uh, recall that Gan talked about a quarterly chart and why it was important to him. A lot of the time, Gan uh, people will talk about Gan being very fond of a weekly and a monthly chart, but uh, but there's a quarterly chart that he's fond of too. And, this is a good point uh, in time for me. Tied probably, in Victor with his uh, paying attention to uh, seasonal change, which normally happens around a quarter, the end of a quarter. Well, I think the seasonal change. Uh, he, he wanted people to be aware of seasonal changes, like right now. Uh, but I don't think it's tied into his method of paying attention to the to the weekly quarterly. and monthly. So let okay. me let me change this to a quarterly real quick. Okay, here's the quarterly chart. The same deal. This low right here was the January uh, first quarter 2015 low. The number was 109. If uh, these next two uh, quarters were inside bars, so we had a breakout here. We had an inside bar. We had a breakout here. We had an inside bar. We had a breakout here. Now things get rolling. Because now we're trading. Now, if we're trading the quarterly highs here, and here, and here, you have three solid trades with not a lot of um, um, effort to look at a chart and waste your time. You know, looking at it literally every minute, a minute of the day. So, uh, like you said, we're we're right here now. And Good method. This, so this is this is this is what Gan wanted you to be aware of. And I, it's a good time for me to tell you about his books. I'm gonna go over it real quick. Because a lot of people ask me, well, what's a good book to read about Gan? And I would probably say the best source is go go to the go to the author himself. And um, so he wrote a book in uh, he wrote a book in I've got the date here 
1923 called uh, the I'm sorry 1936 called the new stock trend detector I would I would look at that book because he talks about these um, the way to trade these uh, screens on a monthly weekly and uh, quarterly and even yearly basis the other book that he has is the uh, how to trade uh, how to make money how to make profits in commodities that was 1942 and uh, one of his last books that he wrote in 1949, because I think he passed away in 1953 or 52, was uh, My 45 Years on Wall Street. And he talks about all of these methods again. And I think he did that, uh, he titled the book on purpose, My 45 Degrees, because he was a sly fox. He tried to, you know, play mind games with people and have them try to figure out what, he's, what he was really alluding to. And 45 to him was a major, major, major angle when he constructed his, his uh, daily charts and he looked at the 45 degree angle and 90 degree angle and 180 degree angle. So mm. the other two books that I would recommend, he wrote a commodities course and he wrote a stock trading course. And uh, those are the other two books that are probably so comprehensive. They include elements of all of, all of his other stuff in his previous books. So I just want to mention them. To you. And uh, let's go to, um, a one, 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 uh, one of our members is saying he went to India, Bangla, uh, Bangalore, to learn about the nine planets. Is that uh, true? I think, is this? Well, I've heard that that's, that's true, that he went to India to learn about the planets and probably about the pyramid and how it relates to the, um, gra the graphic representation of a square of nine chart, which I don't have to show you tonight. but. Um, Wow. I, I think that's where he discovered the square of nine method. He also uh, was a he was also a big buddy with an astrologer, an English astrologer, William Old Gold. William Gold was his name, and uh, his name his his pen name was Safariel. S e p h e r i a l. And I've got a lot of his books, and they're excellent books if you want to learn about astrology, written in a in a very uh, intellectual but uh, easy to read method. In fact, he belonged to a uh, uh, as he belonged to an astrological slash theosophical society that was run by a woman called uh, Madame Blavatsky, and that was probably in the 30s and the 20s. And they kicked him out because he was giving away too much stuff in his writing. So I thought that was pretty interesting as a character. <laughs> you know, giving away too much stuff is not allowed in these societies. So, but anyway, they that's wanted, they wanted to sell it. Yeah, they keep one. it a secret. Yeah. Right. So yeah. here's a um, here's a one month chart. Let me get it changed here for you. Okay. So if we're looking at using the same method on a one month chart, I would be looking at this trade didn't work out very uh, very well right here because we had um, a high and then a reversal. But here we here, here here's a trade right here. Uh, here's somewhat of a trade, and here's another one, and here was another one, and here's a reversal. So you know you got to watch what you're what you're up against, and um, wow. yeah, right now because um, there's a lot of a lot of uh, we don't know who the players are, the bigger players that uh, ha can move the market like this, you know. But uh, Jamie Dimon certainly. Um, yeah, but Jamie didn't fire those traders in in London. He said he'd no. fire anyone. Well. Right. No, he's also the kind of guy who gets paid three hundred million dollar bonus while the London Whale dude basically blew up the London office. Yeah, with, uh, yeah. With his yeah. Of plays. He doesn't talk about that. No, he doesn't. But we remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I moved it to a one week because I think the one week is more is more is more in, uh, something that you should pay attention to definitely with Bitcoin because if you look at the one week chart. If you start going back to here, and I know uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda is a uh, is a term I like to use because people say, well, what good is your chart? You you could have you're just looking at stuff that happened already. You weren't there when it happened. I said, yeah, I know, but you know, I want to give you some examples to go forward. And uh, there was a guy I wanted to mention to you, uh, Dale. He used to write for the Sun Times when I when I was in Chicago, and it was back in the 70s. I think early 70s, mid 70s, uh, late 60s. His name was Jay Feldman, or he wrote a um, 
uh, uh, horse racing um, handicapping um, uh, column in the Daily Sun, uh, Chicago Sun Times. Oh. And he was the one who wrote a book called Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda. Oh. Uh, and, and it had to do with his horse racing experience. But I'll never forget one day he he was he was analyzing horses that were going to be playing, uh, going to be running at uh, Hawthorne. And uh, this horse was so bad. After he analyzed the horse, you know, you would have a, a little written comment next to each horse. And the comment was out for an airing. Out for what? Out for an airing. So you know, the horse oh. just came out of the barn just to get some air. Oh, so anyway, that was my what it could have. Going to the glue factory. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> all right. So here, uh, here's a what it could have, should have trade right here. We have a double top right here, on a on a weekly chart, right. and it blew through there, right there. So then there's another trade right there on the upside. Here's another one. Here's another one. Now we've got problems. Now we've got, you know, I basically a channel channel section, channel trading in here. Right. Some but type of correction. If you got the capability to go short, you would have gone short right there, right where 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 the horizontal line is, right there. Okay, and you're you'd be a the, little bit underwater here. You'd be under underwater, right. Um okay, let me uh see what else I have for you. Uh, well, you said to let you know when we'd be getting close to a wrap. So, okay. uh, if you wanted to go to that, um, okay, I'll do that. Okay, let me do that right away here then. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, first of all, I mentioned the one. This is this is the program I use because it's very easy to uh, use. Uh, you can you can just uh, dial into it online. It's called PlanetWatcher.org uh, dot uh, com. Excuse me. And this is the October. This is the uh, this is this is today's chart. Uh, you see the cursor right here. Yeah. That's the symbol for the planet Neptune, and it's at 12 yeah. degrees, 12 degrees uh, Pisces. And so the question is, how do you convert that? You first uh, to get longitude. I'll give you that right now. Let me get it. Right so it's really true when you use the word navigate the market because you're talk talking longitude and yeah. latitude? No, okay. it's just longitude. Uh, just longitude. Okay. You just want to get familiar how to do the conversions. So okay. if Neptune is at 12, 12 degrees Pisces, here's an easy chart. I, I made an example here so people can actually screenshot it for themselves. Pisces, the uh, it begins at uh, zero degrees. In other words, zero degrees Pisces is actually equivalent to 330 degrees on a 360 degree chart. Okay. And um, so what I'll do is I'll add, I'll use 330 and I'll add 12 degrees because I have to add 12 to uh, 330 and I get 342. Okay. okay, now I need to, uh, if I'm looking at the ESs, and now right now they're what? At, um, let's see. I'll put that back on there. Uh, the ES, let me check where ES is for you. Yeah, I can't uh, I can't see the number, but I think we're at what twenty five oh two. Yeah. Okay. Here's the way Gan would do it. He would take twenty five oh two, and I like the ESs because they work very well with the three hundred sixty degree um, circumference of the of the uh, zodiac signs. So I take twenty five oh two, and I have to find out how many three hundred sixty degree rotations go into that number at any given at that time so if i divide the 3502 by 360 i have a number of 6.95 so uh, i drop the fraction and i multiply 360 degrees by six if i do that i get a number of 2160 follow that i drop yes. the fraction so at this level i would i know that i have a full rotation of six uh, 360 degrees times six rotations. 
Now I take the number that the market's trading at 2502 and I subtract 2160 from it. And I get you're talking S and P's, right? Yeah, S and P's. That's that's okay. my favorite, so favorite one to use because I think it's, it's yeah, 2515 is a spy and the S and P's are 2521 right now. Right. Well, what you can do with the spy is the uh, you you have to use a multiplier with the spy if you use right. the spy. You have to multiply the actual lower number by 10, and you actually then end up pretty close with the ES levels. So if I subtract 2160 from 2502, I get a number of 342. 342 is very close to where Neptune is because we just said Neptune is at what, what I say. Let me see what it is. It's at 12 degrees. It's at 12 degrees um, Pisces, and that converts to 342 degrees. So you can uh. say you can say the market is sitting right on the Neptune line. And you you see my tweets, you'll see me saying that. And why is that important? I've noticed that when the market is stuck right at at a major planet, the major planets for me are Neptune, uh, Saturn, Pluto, uh, Jupiter, the Sun, and possibly Mars. The minor planets like Venus and Mercury, I don't, I don't usually deal with, but we're at a level here where, where if we break above the Neptune line, which is right where we're at now, we could go higher, or this could be an important rejection point. Now, do you remember the Trump low? We had yes. a Trump low, which um, I wrote it down. Is November uh, 11th. November 11th. I think I used November 9th, so I might be um, off. By yeah. no, it might be the night. Um, yeah, the Trump low, I had 20, uh, ES is 2028. And I'm going to, I made that a screenshot of that, of that date as well. Let's see where it is. Here it is. Here's Planet Watcher for November 20th. I'm sorry, November 9th of last year. And uh, the Trump low then on the 9th was um, 2030, uh, 2030 okay. in the night session. Okay, 2030. If I use 2030, again, I have to do the same thing. I have to find out how many complete rotations go into the ES market price at that point in time. So 2030 divided by 360 gives me a number of 5.63. I drop the fraction and I multiply 360 times uh, 5 and I get a, uh, a number of 1,800. Then I have to subtract 1800 from um, the number you mentioned, which is 2030. Okay, let's see what that does. That number is 230. Now we have to go back to your conversion chart, which I will reposted here. Yeah? If you notice, uh, Scorpio, which is right here. It begins at yeah. zero degrees Scorpio. That uh, converts to 210 degrees. And uh, if the market is at 230 degrees, that means that the market was at 20 degrees. We, when we convert back to the regular method, we, we convert back to 20 degrees Scorpio on that day. And let's see where the chart was. Okay, if you, I've got the cursor over the sun. This Let's is Scorpio. It. This is Scorpio. This is 300 and, I'm sorry, what did I say? Um, 210 degrees. This is where 210 degrees would reside. It equals zero degrees Scorpio. So if I add uh, 210 plus 17, I get 227. So for me, the Trump low was held because it had to actually hit uh, the, sun, the uh, sun's longitude line on that night. Hmm. So when I, when, I, when I see the market move through all of these, and then we had the rally, obviously, it's moved all the way all up through here, and we're now way up here. So we've, we had a, we've had a, you know, a good run. So that's why I use the planet because I'm very – I'm very curious uh, to find out why all this stuff works the way it does. So when, uh, 
What when a great presentation, Victor. Thank, thank you, Dale. So that was I mean, my. I, I, I've got any comments. Very interesting guest, Dale. Thank you for the knowledge. Um, the GAN emblem and uh, how do you interpret time cycles? So a lot of interest in the room. You guys are going to be able to uh, uh, view this. It's recorded, and uh, Victor's giving you information on how you reach him. Here's his email. And here's his Twitter. He tweets in my stream, books, charts, and uh, actually, I think he has his first interview pinned on his Twitter. So um, yeah. thank, thank you so much, Victor, for coming back again. And you topped yourself. It was okay. even more even more informative than the last one. Well, I, OK, well, I appreciate uh, the invite back. That's really kind of you, Dale. And uh, it's always great to talk with you and uh, share some of this with everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to have someone uh, that is a giver to share uh, work that took you decades of knowledge and wisdom to accumulate. So thank you, my trading warrior brother. Thank, thank you, you everyone. You're very welcome, my friend. And uh, thank you, Face. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. So whether you use GAN or Harmonix or Elliot or all of them, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you, Steve Volge, for uh, a great look at the complete board and uh, very smart of all you people who took advantage of this deal. Today's the last day to get our seasonal prices. See everyone tomorrow. Adios. You're welcome, Simon. You're welcome, everyone. Thanks, Dale. You're welcome, Victor. Glad to serve. My mission statement is to build up and edify traders every day. It's my hope that we accomplish that. See everyone tomorrow.